The Minnesota Vikings have most recently lost to the winless Detroit Lions and play the Pittsburgh Steelers in week 14 on Thursday night, and here we are again with the topic of firing head coach Mike Zimmer. I made a video on this about a month and a half ago, and credit to Mike before he loses his job, with at most being after week 18 on Black Monday. The Vikings defeated the Chargers in LA, and pretty soundly at that, who most recently beat the Bengals handedly in Cincinnati, and the Packers, and we all know how good the Green Bay Packers are. But with this most recent loss to the then winless Lions, we are officially calling for Mike Zimmer's job once again, and it is more than just the concept of losing to winless Detroit, although that admittedly does play a part in the calling for his job. Now we are going to deep dive into everything, so without further ado, let's begin. So I'm sure there's going to be some people that want to immediately blame Kirk Cousins for a lot of things as he gets the brunt of a lot of unfair criticism, so let's just go ahead and address this now. Kirk has played great for the most part in 2021, but on Sunday, without his starting left tackle, his multiple-time Pro Bowl running back, and his other star receiver in Adam Thielen, the Vikings put up 27 points on the road. Now, more often than not, whether you're playing the 0-10-1 Lions, or the 2007 Patriots, or 2013 Broncos who had uncanny firepower on the offensive side of the football, 27 on the road should be good enough to win, and especially when you have a defensive guru as head coach. Ultimately, it was not, and there have been a few other times this year where Zim, in a lot of ways, has failed Kirk and the offense, like in Week 2 by giving up 34 points on the road, to which Kirk and the offense put up 33 points, and the kicker, who I love very much by the way, and Greg Joseph, missed a field goal at the end. People ultimately wanted to blame Joseph for that entire game because it was a 37-yard field goal, and yes, Greg should have done his job there, he did not, but if you are a defensive guru the way Zim is supposed to be when the defense was healthy, by the way, with both Daniil Hunter and Everson Griffin at the time, along with all-pro linebacker Eric Kendricks and Pat Pete, Giving up 34 points on the road is simply unacceptable. And what is also unacceptable is the way the Vikings played the Lions the entire way up the field and what ultimately lost them the game on Sunday. Now, yes, the Vikings had several starters out, including Eric Kendricks, Anthony Barr, Daniil Hunter, and Patrick Peterson, and Everson Griffin too for that matter, but whether you have them or their backups in, the prevent defense let Jared Goff carve us up the entire 75 yards is why Zim needs to go. Now as I talk over the next couple of minutes, I am going to be showing the all 22 angles of the Lions final drive from Sunday, and what I want you guys to pay attention to is the depth of where every secondary member is. Granted, I don't think they should have been in a man-to-man -man press and send six players on a blitz every play with a home run or strikeout mentality, but there has to be some sort of mix-up rather than just the bend but don't break, and in this case with the Lions winning, and congratulations to them by the way for doing so, breaking defense. Zim kept calling plays to allow them to pick up chunks at a time, and this is not the first time he's done this. The Vikings continuously rank in teams that give up the most points in the final two minutes of halves, and it is because of defensive calls like this. And if you did not know, Detroit got the ball back after Justin Jefferson scored the then go-ahead touchdown with 150 remaining. So it's not like Detroit got the ball back with 32 seconds remaining, and Jared Goff made some ridiculous Aaron Rodgers type throws that really only Rodgers can make. And not to discredit Jared Goff as much as it's saying, there was not any spectacular highlight reel type throws that only he can make. They were pretty consistent throws that a quarterback should make. There just wasn't when the defense plays extremely soft coverage that allows them to get chunk after chunk after chunk, which would ultimately result in a 14-play, 75-yard game-winning drive. And as frustrating as it is to lose to the Lions, with of course the winless team in December finally winning a game, it's not as much the result the Vikings fans are frustrated with, I mean, it is to a degree, don't get me wrong, but it's the process of how you get to this result. The Vikings routinely give up points in the final two minutes of halves, due in large part to their defensive guru of a head coach and how he plays to not lose games. And when you play to not lose games, shocking, you end up losing a lot of games. 
Point being is, earlier in the year, the Vikings were up 11 points with 5 minutes to play against the Sam Darnold-led Panthers, gave up a 96-yard drive to allow them to get back into the game. That should have never happened, and it eventually went to overtime, where second-year receiver KJ Osborne walked off with a game-winning touchdown. Now, it would be one thing if that happened once and Zim had it under control, but time and time again, it's the, oh, we'll hang tight when they get to our 10-yard line mentality, and it has cost the Vikings at least four games this year. They should not have lost to the Bengals back in week one, they blew two 14-point leads to the Ravens earlier this year, and lost to the Cooper Rush-led Cowboys in their own stadium on Sunday Night Football, and that was pretty embarrassing for them in the process. The problem I have with Mike Zimmer isn't that the Vikings lost to the Lions, because good teams do occasionally drop games. The reality is the Lions have NFL players on their roster, and it's not like they're suiting up random civilians of Detroit and saying good luck. Not at all. The Buffalo Bills lost to the Jags earlier this year, and the Texans beat the Titans in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. And over the course of now a 17-game season, weird crap, and I'd like to use a different word there, but I can't, but weird crap happens. The problem is consistently having games go down to the wire because of lack of aggression and putting bad teams away when you more than have the opportunity to do so. And then, believe it or not to the people who love dunking on him, but having Kirk Cousins bail Zim out time and time again in the fourth quarter or in overtime, in a game that, by the way, should have never went to overtime. The Vikings nearly got swept by Detroit this year as, in the first time these teams played, it took a 40-yard drive in less than 30 seconds with no timeouts from Kirk to put them in field goal position to attempt to win the game. This team has playmakers that young quarterbacks like Tua, Zach Wilson, and Trevor Lawrence would absolutely kill to have, but there is at times little aggression and a lot of complacency from the coaching staff, and there's a magnitude of reasons why the Vikings are 5-7, and seven, but that is what it boils down to most. I tweeted this earlier today, but the Minnesota Vikings are 5-7 and seven and have more points scored than the Baltimore Ravens, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Green Bay Packers, and the Tennessee Titans. It does not take a rocket scientist to figure out what the problem is in this scenario, and breaking news, it is not Kirk Cousins. Kirk has the same amount of touchdown passes as Patrick Mahomes right now, despite throwing 32 less passes and has 9 less interceptions than Mahomes right now, again while throwing 32 less passes. He also has more touchdowns than Aaron Rodgers, and to at least be fair to Aaron the same way I benefited Kirk with that Mahomes stat, Kirk has thrown the ball 73 more times than Aaron has, but Kirk also has more touchdowns than Dak Prescott, Joe Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. So if you told a Vikings fans, or even Mike Zimmer for that matter before the season, that 12 games in, this is how it would be, Zim couldn't have been anything but ecstatic with that piece of information, along with also informing Mike that his quarterback has the lowest interception percentage and the lowest amount of interceptions thrown across the entire NFL. And by the way, Kirk ranks 5th in completion percentage and 6th in passing yards while we are on the topic. 5 wins at this point for the Vikings, despite having the 11th most points in the NFL and the least, not the 4th least or 6th or 7th least or whatever, but the absolute least amount of turnovers out of any team in the NFL, to be 2 games below 500 at this point in the year is flat out unacceptable. Mike Zimmer at his peak was a very good NFL coach, but like players, coaches have peaks and valleys of their careers. We are most certainly at the trough of Zimmer's career, but the 2016 when the team's season started out 5-0 and 2017 of course with the unexpected 13-3 run in the Minneapolis Miracle were fun times for the Vikings and their fan base, and they should be looked at as successful seasons, at least the 5-0 part. The collapse, the 3-8, was kind of a story of things that would eventually come in the last two years, but the 5-0 start and then the following year, they were as fun of times as we ever had in the Zim era. The Zim Reapers, as the defense was called, is long gone, and so is Zim's ability to put the team in a position to win a Super Bowl, and 2020 and 2021 have proven that. And being on the end of statistics of this is the only team in NFL history, or this is the first team since 1972, or whatever, it's both tiring and exhausting as a fan, and the fans, and most certainly the players, like the Dalvin Cooks, the Justin Jeffersons, the Eric Kendricks, 
well, they, and I didn't mean to leave anybody out, but they all deserve better than what Mike Zimmer as a head coach currently is. And as we wrap up today's video, I do want to say this. Yes, I made a video on why Mike Zimmer should be fired, and I do think he should be fired. But after that, just let him go. He's a human being at the end of the day. And there was a tweet that said yesterday, can we as Vikings fans cool it on the Zimmer aggressive hate? There's crazies threatening his daughter and grandchildren, and if you are doing that, don't. Be a, all you have to be is be a decent human being. Mike Zimmer is a football coach. Yes, I want him canned, and yes, I want him to live the rest of his life with a happy life in Kentucky on his ranch, but never go after a person's family. Like, that's that's ridiculous, and I want to close on that because that's not who we are as a fan base. As a Vikings fan base, we are better people than that, and just let him live his life once he's gone and wish him the best because that's all we can do. Thanks, Mike, for a great seven years, but it has been time to move on, and I wish him nothing but the best in his after head coach football life now with that being said that's all i have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and if you're still here yep please leave a like and subscribe it only take a second to do and until next time be safe and have a great day